This morning, we got results from my favorite beverage play, Constellation Brands, best known for its Mexican beer portfolio. I think Modelo, Corona, Pacifico, although it's got a wine and spirits business, too. I like this one so much that we own it big for my travel trust, and today I'm feeling buzzed because they reported some fantastic numbers. Constellation delivered a 15-cent earnings beat off a $2.11 basis, higher than expected sales, led by their stellar Mexican beer portfolio. Wow. Stock's been a winner all year. It's rallied another 3 bucks and change today. Can it keep climbing? Let's check in with Bill Newlands. He's the president and CEO of Constellation Brands. Get a better sense of the quarter. Mr. Newlands, welcome back to Mad Money. Thanks, Jim. Good to be here. All right, so, Bill, this is what I felt, especially because of the weather, your best quarter ever. And I want people to understand how much a percentage of the growth of beer you are the new products that you've introduced and what you're doing with this bountiful free cash flow. Well, it's a spectacular year for us. As you point out, a lot of things happened this year. Modelo became the number one beer by dollars in the U.S., but it was not limited to Modelo. Uh, we were the number one CPG growth company in 23, which made five of the last seven years when that's been the case, when we've been number one, and 11 consecutive years when we've been in the top 10. It was really a spectacular year for our, for our beer business. Now, I don't want to be too forward, but we do have what's known as a spring shelf reset. You have a huge number of new products. I don't know whether you're going to be able to put in some of these fantastic new drinks, which, Sam, frankly, uh, I don't know. I mean, I got to try the, the, the Fresca Picante. I haven't had that. I haven't had the Negro Con Chili. But with this new space, what do you do? Do you put in these new brands or you just flood the zone with Modelo and Pacifico and Corona? It's some of both of those. You know, we were pleased that we've gotten more than double-digit uh, increase in our shelf space here in the spring resets. And frankly, we deserved it because of the velocity of our brands. But in some instances, it's broadening out our, our core franchises. And in some, as you point out, it's opening up great space for our innovation. Our innovation agenda has been going equally well. You know, Oro this past year was terrific. We're adding two new SKUs in that. Our Aguas Frescas, which we tested in Las Vegas this year, is being expanded across the country. So we've got a lot of good things coming, and will you put that space to good work? Meanwhile, Pacifico, 17 percent growth. I wish people understood how hard this is. Could you please tell people how hard it is to get 20 million cases in growth? Well, as you said, it isn't easy. But Pacifico has been one of those great brands. It's very developed on the West Coast, but it's also really starting to express itself around the country. We've got 47 out of the 50 states that are up 50 percent. Excuse me, up 50 uh, are up over uh, double digits. So we, we've had a great run with Pacifico, and it's really just getting started in many ways because it's very overdeveloped in the state of California. But uh, the, the East Coast is really coming on. Some of the beach markets in Florida and New Jersey are coming on. We're very excited about the long-term potential for Pacifico. Yeah, I'm finally just seeing it. You know, we've loved it for a long time. Now, uh, there are a lot of companies that people in the consumer packaged goods space that don't have your growth. And what, what they get excited about is buying back shares and dividend. I always say, look, if you had anything to grow, put the money in that. You guys are still growing brewery because you have too much demand with your current brewery, right? We do. We're, we're, but the benefit is of a company like ours with great cash flow is we can do all of those things. We put more than $900 million last year into returns to our shareholders and dividends and share buybacks while still putting a billion dollars into our development of our beer business. You know, we're building out Veracruz. That will come out about a year, a little over a year from now. That will open. And we've added capacity of both Nava and Obregon. So we're continuing to invest in the future because we see a long runway for our brands. Okay, I know the analysts are going to be uh, disdainful if I don't say it. You do have a, you, you've got the wine and spirit portfolio. It, it did not was not up to snuff with you uh, last time I spoke. Now you've got someone new, fresh eyes, worth putting a lot of money toward, or just kind of just let it go as is. Well, we spent a lot of time looking at it and saying, you know, what do we need to do? We're going to put a lot more focus on the critical brands, brands like The Prisoner and Miami and High West and Mi Campo as examples. Um, we're also going to make sure that we focus our attention on execution. Uh, I think we spread ourselves a little too thin the past year. Sam Glaser, who we just uh, introduced as the new president of the business, got over 30 years in the business. And we're really looking forward to what he can bring and the kind of executional excellence that we think will be important for that business going forward. OK, need that. Now, uh, on-premise versus store, what do you want to do here? What ratios do you want? 
It's interesting. We still haven't gotten back to the ratio we saw before the pandemic. We used to be in the 15 to 17 percent range of on-premise uh, being of our total. Uh, but that number is still around 13. So there's still plenty of room to grow. That's an area that I don't think is ever quite returned to where it was beforehand. And it kind of goes in spits and spurts. We see a lot of opportunity there. We, we gained share with Modelo, with Pacifico, and with Corona last year in the on-premise. But we think there's a lot of room to grow there as well. What do you think is behind the slowing in Corona? I mean, I got my theory that everyone likes Modelo so much, yet you had to take your, your tap out that was Corona and put it with Modelo because of the demand. And there's not enough new taps. But am I reading that right, or is just Corona a little low and we, we've got plenty ahead? Corona is still solid growth. We grew about 1% last year. And admittedly, there's some interaction between Modelo and Corona. But we've got a real ace up our sleeve coming this year. We're going to do a test called Corona Sunbrew in the Northeast. You'll get a chance to have some of that. Um, I think it's terrific. And it really opens up a very new and interesting dimension uh, to Corona. So Corona is going to continue to be a really important part of our growth profile going forward. Then uh, the last thing I, I, I need to know is... Uh, when you're paying down debt, what's the correct amount of debt? And the reason I say that is because it's going to inflect. And one day you're going to come on and you say, listen, you know, the debt's at the level, but it's not going to be zero. I don't want it at zero. What level do we not worry about? What level do we say, hey, listen, it's time? We think about three times is the right oh, place. Good. Um, we were at that about a year plus ago. We had the D class, which got us up a little higher than that. But we're very close to that, and we expect to get to that. Uh, that ratio before this fiscal year is over. So we think that's about right for us. That's going to be blast off, Bill, when that happens. Well, look, I, I thought this was the best quarter that I've had with you, working with you, and I think people should understand that. Uh, Bill Newens is the president and CEO of Constellation Brands. Bill, this is a great day to see you. Thank you so much for coming on. Thanks, Jim. Appreciate it. May have money's back after the break. Coming up, they're about more than signing on the dotted line. Can this company reinvent itself with the power of AI? Find out next. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Cramer on X. Have a question? Tweet Cramer. Hashtag Mad Mentions. Send Jim an email to madmoney at cnbc.com or give us a call at 1-800-743-CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.